The night sky had always been a source of wonder for humanity, a vast canvas of celestial mystery and beauty. But on a night that would be etched into the collective memory of the human race, the stars were obscured, not by clouds, but by a fleet of ships so vast, so otherworldly, that for a moment, the world stood still. The Galactic Empire had arrived, casting a shadow over Earth that turned the night into an eerie twilight. News of the fleet's sudden appearance spread like wildfire, igniting a global frenzy. Telescopes, both amateur and professional, were pointed skyward, their lenses capturing the impossible. Ships of unfathomable size, their designs unlike anything even the most imaginative science fiction had dared to conceive. The sight was both mesmerizing and terrifying, a spectacle that transcended language, culture, and creed, uniting humanity in a shared sense of awe and dread. As governments scrambled to respond, a transmission, clear and unmistakably alien, was broadcasted across every communication channel, translated into every language with unnerving precision. The message was simple and stark. To the inhabitants of Earth, you are not alone in the universe. We are the Galactic Empire, and your world now falls under our domain. Surrender and join us in unity, or face annihilation. In the days that followed, Earth was gripped by a chaos born of fear and disbelief. The streets of cities around the globe were filled with panic and speculation. In secret bunkers and emergency meetings, world leaders debated their response to the threat hanging over them like a sword. Military forces were put on high alert, even as the futility of resistance against such a seemingly invincible foe weighed heavily on the hearts of even the most optimistic. Yet, amidst the turmoil, a different kind of unity began to emerge. Across nations, across divides, humanity's indomitable spirit flickered to life. Scientists, engineers, and strategists came together, pooling resources and knowledge in a desperate bid to understand the technology that loomed above them. Peace treaties were hastily drafted, old rivalries set aside, as the people of Earth faced a common enemy. The decision was made. Earth would not go quietly into the night. A broadcast was prepared, a message of defiance that would resonate across the stars. It was a declaration that humanity, for all its flaws and divisions, possessed a courage and a will to survive that no empire, no matter how mighty, could extinguish. As the transmission was sent, the people of Earth looked up at the sky ablaze with the lights of an alien fleet, their hearts heavy with uncertainty, but unyielding in their resolve. They had issued their warning, their promise that any attempt to conquer would be met with resistance, fierce and unbreakable. The Galactic Empire had set its sights on Earth, but humanity stood ready, united by a threat greater than any they had known. The battle for Earth's future had begun. In the silent expanse of space, Earth's defiant message streaked across the cosmos, a beacon of resistance in the face of the Galactic Empire's overwhelming might. Back on the planet, the mood was one of tense anticipation. The leaders of Earth, standing together on a hastily erected platform at the United Nations, had made their decision known to the world. The broadcast was not just a message to the Empire, but a rallying cry for humanity itself. The transmission, crafted with care and determination, echoed in the homes of billions. We are the people of Earth, unique in our diversity, united in our adversity. We do not seek conflict, but we will not cower in the shadow of tyranny. We warn the Galactic Empire. Any attempt to subjugate our world will be met with unwavering resistance. We stand ready to defend our freedom, our planet, and our right to exist as a sovereign people. Together, we are indomitable. As the final words of the broadcast faded, a hush fell over the globe. It was a declaration of unity unprecedented in human history, a moment when every petty difference was set aside for a cause greater than any single nation or individual. People around the world waited with bated breath for the Empire's response, their anxiety tempered by a newfound sense of solidarity. In the days following the broadcast, Earth braced for retaliation. Air and space defense systems, a patchwork of technology from every capable nation, were put on high alert. Satellites scanned the heavens for any movement from the alien fleet, while ground-based telescopes kept a vigilant watch. But the expected attack did not come. Instead, the Empire's response was one of curiosity. 
A single ship, sleek and imposing, broke from the formation of the fleet and descended towards Earth. It landed in an open field, chosen by the aliens for its proximity to the United Nations headquarters in New York. A message was sent, not of war, but of parley. The Empire was intrigued by humanity's boldness, their willingness to face annihilation with defiance. The world watched as a delegation was formed to meet with the alien emissary. Scientists, diplomats, and military leaders chosen not just for their expertise, but for their representation of Earth's diverse populace, were sent to negotiate. It was a moment fraught with danger, yet it offered a glimmer of hope. Perhaps there was a chance, however slim, for peace. Or, if not peace, then an opportunity to gain insight into the Empire, its weaknesses, and its intentions. As the human delegation approached the alien vessel, a ramp descended with a hiss, revealing the emissary. The creature was unlike any being humans had ever imagined, tall with iridescent skin that shimmered in the sunlight and eyes that reflected a deep, intelligent awareness. It spoke, its voice resonating not just in the ears but in the minds of the delegation. I am here to listen, to understand. Your message has been heard across the galaxy, and it has brought forth a curiosity. Speak, humans of Earth, and let us find where our paths may lead. The meeting, broadcasted live around the world, marked the first true contact between humanity and an alien civilization. It was a conversation that would reveal the vastness of the Empire, its multitude of conquered worlds, and the existence of other beings that, like humans, yearned for freedom. The Emissary's visit opened the door to the cosmos, revealing the challenges and opportunities that lay beyond Earth's skies. Humanity, once isolated, was now a part of a larger, more complex galactic tapestry woven together by the threads of destiny and the indomitable will to survive. The encounter with the Galactic Empire's Emissary, broadcast live to every corner of Earth, held the world in rapt attention. Humanity was on the precipice of a new era, teetering between the threat of annihilation and the promise of a place within the vast cosmic community. The alien before them, a being of grace and formidable presence, named itself Jareth, an ambassador of the Empire, tasked with understanding the defiant species that dared to resist the might of the galaxy's most formidable force. In the days that followed, Jareth engaged with Earth's leaders, scientists, and thinkers in a series of discussions that were as enlightening as they were tense. Through these dialogues, humanity learned of the Galactic Empire's breadth, a sovereign power that spanned thousands of worlds, each a cog in the vast machinery of their interstellar dominion. Yet, it was not the Empire's strength, but its vulnerabilities that captivated the human audience. Jareth spoke of internal strife, of worlds that chafed under the Empire's yoke, dreaming of rebellion. More intriguingly, the Emissary revealed the existence of civilizations that had managed to elude the Empire's grasp or resist its rule. These tales, woven into the fabric of the Empire's history, were not meant to inspire hope, but to serve as a warning of the futility of resistance. Yet, to the humans listening, they were a beacon of possibility a hint that the Empire was not invincible. Jareth, for all its diplomatic intentions, had become an inadvertent herald of unity among the stars. The knowledge it shared sparked a daring plan among Earth's leaders and its newfound allies. Secretly, they resolved to reach out to these other civilizations, to forge alliances based on mutual desire for freedom and sovereignty. The task was fraught with risk requiring stealth missions beyond the solar system, using experimental technology to evade the Empire's ubiquitous patrols. As these clandestine operations took shape, a peculiar bond formed between Jareth and its human counterparts. The Emissary, initially detached, began to exhibit a curiosity about humanity's resilience, its culture, and its relentless pursuit of freedom. Conversations that had once been formal and cautious grew more open, revealing not just the strategic minds of Earth's defenders, but their hopes, fears, and dreams. In a moment of unprecedented candor, Jareth confided in the humans. The empire, it revealed, was not monolithic, but a tapestry of conquered peoples, many of whom harbored silent resentment towards their rulers. This insight offered a glimpse into the empire's potential weaknesses, 
not in its fleets or firepower, but in the hearts of those it sought to dominate. The emissary's revelations, offered in moments stolen from official proceedings, provided Earth with a strategy that went beyond military might. They would fight not just to defend their home, but to inspire a galaxy-wide uprising against the Empire. As the emissary prepared to depart, its mission ostensibly completed, it left humanity with a parting gift. An encrypted channel for communication, hidden from the Empire's eyes. This act, a violation of its orders, was Jareth's acknowledgement of humanity's unique spirit, a gamble on the indomitable will to fight for freedom. The first contact had ended, but its ramifications echoed across the world. Humanity was no longer fighting for survival, but for a place among the stars, as a beacon of hope for the oppressed. The stage was set for a grand alliance, a coalition of the willing, ready to stand against the Galactic Empire. Earth's message of defiance had been a spark. Now, with the knowledge and insight gained from Jareth, that spark was set to ignite a flame that could light the darkness of tyranny across the galaxy. With the Emissary's departure, Earth stood at a crossroads, its fate intertwined with the hidden currents of galactic descent Jareth had revealed. The mission was clear, reach out to those civilizations that harbored resentment towards the Galactic Empire, those that, like humanity, yearned for the freedom to determine their own destinies. It was a daunting task, requiring not just technological prowess, but a level of diplomacy and secrecy hitherto unknown to mankind. Teams of envoys composed of Earth's most skilled diplomats, linguists, and scientists were assembled. They were tasked with missions of paramount importance and unprecedented danger to traverse the vast, dark stretches of space in search of allies among the stars. These envoys embarked on their journeys aboard ships equipped with the latest stealth technologies, a hybrid of human innovation and alien engineering gleaned from scraps of information shared by Jareth. Their first contact was with the Jarin, a species of remarkable intellect and empathy, residing in a system on the fringes of the Empire's domain. The Jarin, too, had suffered under the Empire's rule, their once thriving culture stifled by oppressive governance. The meeting, held in secret aboard a Jaren orbital platform, was tense but hopeful. Earth's envoys shared their vision of a galactic federation, free from the Empire's tyranny, where each civilization could flourish. Moved by humanity's determination and the prospect of regaining their freedom, the Jaren pledged their support, offering both their knowledge and their covert network of resistance. Word of this alliance spread through encrypted channels, igniting a beacon of hope across occupied systems. Other civilizations, inspired by Earth's defiance and the promise of the Jaren Alliance, began to emerge from the shadows. The Cerulians, expert saboteurs who had waged a guerrilla war against the Empire for decades. The Tolvans, whose mastery of stealth technology made them invaluable scouts and spies. And the Enari, a warrior race, long thought to be myths, whose fleet could turn the tide of any battle. Each brought unique strengths to the burgeoning alliance, united by a common cause. As these alliances were forged in secret, Earth became a focal point for the resistance. Laboratories and think tanks buzzed with activity, as human and alien minds collaborated on new technologies, strategies, and plans for an uprising. Training camps were established, where soldiers from different worlds trained together, learning to fight as a single, cohesive force. The diversity of the Alliance's members, once a potential source of division, became its greatest strength. Strategies were devised that leveraged each species' unique abilities, creating a synergy that could adapt to and overcome any challenge. Meanwhile on Earth, the public's awareness of these interstellar developments grew. The initial fear and uncertainty that had gripped the planet transformed into a sense of purpose and unity. The population rallied behind their leaders and the alien allies who stood with them against a common enemy. Propaganda, once a tool of division, became a means of inspiring solidarity, with broadcasts and posters proclaiming the unity of Earth's inhabitants and their extraterrestrial allies. As the alliance grew, so did its boldness. Raids on Empire supply depots, sabotage of communication networks, and rescue missions to free prisoners of war became increasingly frequent and successful. Each victory, each planet touched by the spirit of rebellion, 
added fuel to the fire of resistance that was slowly spreading across the galaxy. The Galactic Empire, for all its might and millennia of dominance, found itself facing an adversary unlike any before. A coalition not bound by race or planet, but by the shared desire for freedom. Earth, once an obscure and divided world on the edge of the galactic map, had become the heart of a rebellion that dared to challenge the stars themselves. Chapter 4 marked not just the formation of a galactic alliance, but the beginning of a new chapter in the cosmic saga. Humanity, with its newfound allies, stood ready to face the Empire, not as isolated rebels, but as a united front. The stage was set for a conflict that would determine the fate of countless worlds, a testament to the power of unity in the face of tyranny. With alliances formed and strategies set, the resistance against the Galactic Empire began in earnest. Earth and its newfound allies launched a series of coordinated strikes across the galaxy, targeting key Imperial assets with precision and daring. These actions, though risky, served a dual purpose, to weaken the Empire's grip on the galaxy and to inspire other subjugated civilizations to join the growing rebellion. The first major operation, codenamed Starlight Sabotage, was a testament to the Alliance's ingenuity and the spirit of cooperation that had come to define it. The target was an Empire-controlled hyperfuel production facility in the Orland system, a critical node in the Empire's supply chain. A joint team of human and Cerulean operatives infiltrated the facility, planting a series of explosive charges designed to incapacitate the refinery without causing undue harm to the civilian workers. The operation was a resounding success, crippling the Empire's fuel supply and sending a clear message. The resistance was capable, daring, and everywhere. News of the operation spread like wildfire, buoyed by the resistance's covert communication networks. Across the galaxy, oppressed populations began to stir, their hope rekindled by the bold actions of the Alliance. In the wake of starlight sabotage, recruitment into the Resistance swelled, with volunteers from dozens of worlds pledging their support. These new recruits brought with them valuable skills, knowledge, and the determination to fight for their freedom. Meanwhile, Earth's strategic importance grew exponentially. The planet had become not just a symbol of defiance, but a hub of resistance activity. Training camps worked tirelessly to prepare soldiers from across the galaxy for the battles ahead, while scientists and engineers collaborated on advancements in weaponry, shielding, and propulsion technologies. Earth's diverse ecosystems and terrains served as the perfect proving grounds for these newly formed units, creating warriors adept in a variety of combat situations, from the vacuum of space to the dense jungles of distant worlds. One of the most significant victories came with the liberation of Theronus V, a planet known for its rich agricultural output, which had been forced to feed the Empire's war machine. A combined force of human, Inari, and Tolvans executed a daring assault, breaking the Empire's blockade and securing the planet. The success of the operation was not just in the liberation of Theronus V, but in demonstrating the Resistance's ability to conduct large-scale, multi-species operations. The series of successes emboldened the resistance, igniting sparks of rebellion across the galaxy. Planets under the yoke of the Empire began to rise, their actions ranging from passive resistance to outright insurrection. The Galactic Empire, stretched thin by its expansive domain and now facing an enemy that was everywhere and nowhere, struggled to respond effectively. Its once unassailable authority was starting to crumble, eroded by the relentless pressure of the resistance. However, the Empire was far from defeated. It retaliated with brutal efficiency, cracking down on dissenting worlds with a ferocity intended to quell the rebellion through fear. Entire planets were put under martial law, with Imperial troops enforcing order through draconian measures. These actions, while temporarily effective in suppressing open rebellion, only served to further alienate the Empire's subjects, driving more into the arms of the Resistance. As the galaxy teetered on the brink of full-scale war, Earth remained a beacon of hope. The planet had evolved from an isolated backwater to the heart of a galactic uprising, its people united in their diversity, fighting not just for their own survival, but for the freedom of the galaxy. The Resistance was rising, its ranks bolstered by every act of empire aggression, every world that dared to dream of freedom.
The stage was set for a conflict of epic proportions, one that would decide the fate of countless lives and the future of the galaxy itself. The success of the resistance across the galaxy, fueled by Earth's leadership and the unity of the allied civilizations, did not go unnoticed by the Galactic Empire. In a strategic move, the Empire shifted its focus, aiming to crush the heart of the rebellion by targeting Earth directly. A massive fleet, larger and more formidable than the one that had first darkened Earth's skies, was dispatched, setting the stage for an unprecedented siege. As the Imperial Armada approached, a sense of foreboding settled over Earth. The planet's defenses, a patchwork of human innovation and alien technology, were put to the ultimate test. Satellites armed with defensive weaponry orbited the planet, while on the surface, anti-spacecraft batteries stood ready. The combined fleets of the Allied civilizations took position, forming a protective shield around Earth. The unity of the resistance was palpable. Soldiers from different worlds stood shoulder to shoulder, prepared to defend not just Earth but the symbol it had become. The initial stages of the siege were marked by a series of high-stakes skirmishes. Imperial probes attempted to penetrate the resistance's defenses, each time met with fierce opposition. These early engagements showcased the resilience and adaptability of the Allied forces who managed to hold their own against the Empire's might. However, the true test came when the main body of the Imperial fleet arrived, casting a shadow that stretched across continents. The Empire unleashed a relentless barrage, aiming to overwhelm Earth's defenses through sheer force. The planet's surface shuddered under the impact of orbital strikes, while the skies were lit by the continuous blaze of energy weapons. The Resistance fought back with everything they had, their ships darting through the Imperial formations, striking at vulnerabilities with precision and daring. In one of the most pivotal moments of the siege, the Inari-led squadron executed a daring maneuver, breaching the Imperial blockade to launch a counteroffensive. Their ships, designed for close-quarters combat, engaged the Empire's behemoths, drawing fire away from Earth and disrupting the coordination of the enemy's fleet. This bold action, though costly, provided a much-needed reprieve for the planet's defenders, showcasing the unmatched bravery and sacrifice of the Allied forces. On Earth, the population watched as the battle raged in the skies above. The sight of alien ships fighting alongside human ones against a common enemy was a powerful testament to the bonds formed between the Resistance's members. Despite the fear and uncertainty, there was a sense of pride in what humanity had achieved, not just in terms of technological advancement, but in its capacity to unite disparate peoples in defense of freedom and dignity. As the siege wore on, it became clear that the Empire had underestimated the resolve of Earth and its allies. The Resistance's strategy of guerrilla warfare in space, leveraging the agility and ingenuity of its diverse fleet, began to take its toll on the Imperial forces. Each skirmish, each feint and counter, drained the Empire's resources and morale, revealing cracks in what had once seemed an invincible armada. The turning point came when a covert team of Cyrelian hackers, aided by human intelligence operatives, managed to infiltrate the Empire's command network. This daring cyber assault resulted in the temporary disruption of the Imperial fleet's communications, sowing confusion and disarray among its ranks. Seizing the moment, the Resistance launched a coordinated counterattack, targeting the now vulnerable Imperial ships with a ferocity that turned the tide of the battle. The Siege of Earth, which had begun as a testament to the Empire's might, ended in a demonstration of the resilience and unity of the Resistance. The Imperial fleet, battered and demoralized, was forced to retreat, leaving behind a world that had stood firm against seemingly insurmountable odds. Earth had not only survived, it had galvanized the spirit of the rebellion across the galaxy, proving that even the mightiest empire could be challenged when diverse civilizations stood together for a common cause. In the wake of the siege, Earth's resilience became a legend throughout the galaxy, igniting a fervor of rebellion on dozens of worlds. The Galactic Empire, reeling from its setback, found itself grappling with uprisings that spread like wildfire, fueled by the tale of a single planet's defiance. Seizing this momentum, the leaders of the Resistance plotted their most audacious campaign yet, 
the Battle of Broken Chains, a multi-front offensive aimed at liberating key systems and breaking the Empire's hold on the galaxy. The battle was planned in secret, with Earth's strategists working alongside their allies to coordinate a series of synchronized strikes. The targets were carefully chosen for their strategic value and symbolic importance. Among them was the prison world of Vornax, where thousands of resistance fighters were held captive, and the shipyard of Drethar, where the Empire's formidable dreadnoughts were constructed. As the Resistance's fleets amassed, a palpable sense of unity and determination pervaded among the diverse crews. Humans, Jareen, Cerulians, Tolvans, and Anari, among others, stood ready to strike as one force against the Empire. This unity was the Resistance's greatest strength, embodying the very ideal they fought for, a galaxy where all species could coexist in freedom and mutual respect. The Battle of Broken Chains commenced with a surprise attack on the Drethar shipyards. A fleet led by the Inari, known for their martial prowess, launched a devastating blitz, their ships weaving through the Empire's defenses with unmatched agility. Meanwhile, a Cerulean cyber warfare team disabled the shipyard's automated defenses, allowing the resistance to land troops and sabotage the facility. The destruction of the shipyards dealt a crippling blow to the Empire's naval capabilities ensuring no new dreadnoughts would threaten the galaxy's free worlds. Simultaneously, a daring rescue operation unfolded on Vornax. A coalition of human and Tolvan's operatives specialized in extraction missions penetrated the prison's defenses under the cover of a diversionary assault. The operation was fraught with danger, but the sight of resistance fighters freeing their comrades from the Empire's clutches inspired a surge of hope across the galaxy. The liberated prisoners, among them veterans of countless battles, rejoined the resistance, their spirits unbroken by captivity. The Battle of Broken Chains marked a turning point in the war. System after system shook off the Empire's yoke, their chains broken by the combined might and resolve of the resistance. The victories were hard won, each one a testament to the sacrifices and bravery of those who fought. The losses were mourned, their names etched into the memory of the resistance, a reminder of the cost of freedom. In the aftermath, the Galactic Empire found itself besieged on all fronts. Its once unassailable authority was crumbling, its fleets stretched thin trying to quell the uprisings that had erupted across the galaxy. The resistance, meanwhile, grew stronger, its ranks bolstered by liberated worlds and inspired by the victory at Earth. The battle had shown the galaxy that the Empire could be challenged, that freedom was worth fighting for, and that the chains of tyranny could be broken. The Battle of Broken Chains was not just a military victory, it was a symbol of hope, a beacon for all oppressed peoples across the galaxy. It demonstrated the power of unity and the indomitable spirit of those who yearn for freedom. The Resistance, once a disparate group of rebels, had evolved into a formidable force capable of challenging the Empire's dominance and dreaming of a future where the galaxy was free from tyranny. Buoyed by their successive victories and the crumbling authority of the Galactic Empire, the Resistance, now a formidable alliance of free worlds, prepared for their most audacious endeavor yet, a direct assault on the heart of the Empire. The target was the Imperial Core, a system of planets heavily fortified and considered impregnable, the very seat of the Emperor's power. The success of this mission would not only symbolize the ultimate downfall of the Empire, but also serve as a beacon of freedom across the galaxy. The plan for the assault was multifaceted, involving intricate coordination among all members of the Alliance. The first phase required a series of feints and diversions across Empire-held systems, aimed at spreading the Imperial fleet thin and obscuring the true target of the Resistance's efforts. Meanwhile, a stealth task force composed of the best pilots and ships the Alliance could muster, including the humans' cutting-edge stealth ships, would infiltrate the Imperial core, planting the seeds for a larger invasion. The Resistance's strategy hinged on the element of surprise and the moral fortitude of the Allied forces. It was a gamble of unprecedented scale relying on the hope that the Empire's internal descent and the stretched resources from maintaining order across the galaxy would leave it vulnerable. As the operation commenced, the galaxy watched in bated breath. Resistance cells activated across Imperial worlds, 
rising in coordinated rebellion that drew the Empire's focus away from the impending strike. Meanwhile, the stealth task force made its daring journey into the heart of the Empire, navigating through perilous territories and evading detection with a combination of advanced technology and sheer audacity. The moment of truth came when the task force reached the Imperial Corps, launching a series of precision strikes on key military installations and communication hubs. These initial attacks, swift and devastating, sent ripples of chaos through the Empire's ranks, igniting confusion and fear. For the first time, the invincibility of the Empire was not just challenged, but shattered, as the heart of its power was exposed to direct attack. With the Empire reeling, the main fleet of the Resistance launched its full assault, converging on the Imperial Corps with all the might and fury of a galaxy yearning for freedom. The battle that ensued was monumental, a clash of titans under the shadow of the Empire's capital. Every ship, every warrior of the Resistance fought with the knowledge that this battle was the culmination of their struggle, the final push towards a future they had dared to imagine. Amidst the chaos of battle, a small team of operatives, including key figures from Earth and their alien allies, embarked on a critical mission to infiltrate the Imperial Palace. Their goal was to capture the Emperor, the symbol of the Empire's oppression, and dismantle the regime's command structure from within. The mission was perilous, fraught with danger at every turn, but the resolve of the team was unbreakable, driven by the countless sacrifices that had led to this moment. The fall of the Imperial Corps marked the beginning of the end for the Galactic Empire. The once unstoppable force that had ruled the galaxy with an iron fist was now crumbling, its foundations eroded by the relentless spirit of the Resistance. The capture of the Emperor, broadcasted across the galaxy, served as the definitive signal that the age of Imperial Dominion was over. Across the galaxy, worlds under the yoke of the Empire celebrated their impending freedom, joining in the chorus of rebellion that echoed through the stars. The heart of the Empire had fallen, not to the might of a superior force, but to the indomitable will of a galaxy united in its desire for freedom. The Resistance had achieved the impossible, proving that tyranny could be toppled and that the bonds of solidarity could overcome even the darkest of despairs. The stunning victory at the Imperial Corps sent shockwaves throughout the galaxy. The once mighty Galactic Empire, a regime that had ruled through fear and force for centuries, was now on the brink of collapse. The symbolic capture of the Emperor, broadcasted for all to see, served as the clarion call for oppressed systems far and wide. The Resistance, under the banner of unity and freedom, had achieved what many thought impossible. Now, it was time to finish what they had started. In the days following the battle, the Resistance moved swiftly to consolidate their gains. Leaders of the newly liberated worlds convened, forming a provisional council to oversee the transition from tyranny to self-governance. The focus was on reconciliation and rebuilding, on healing the wounds inflicted by the Empire's long reign of oppression. Humanity, alongside its alien allies, played a crucial role in these efforts, sharing knowledge, resources, and most importantly, a vision for a galaxy founded on the principles of equality and mutual respect. As the remnants of the Empire's forces retreated, trying in vain to regroup and reclaim lost territories, they found themselves facing not just a unified military front but a galaxy-wide uprising. Worlds that had once cowered under the Empire's might rose up, emboldened by the Resistance's victories. Imperial governors and puppet rulers were overthrown, their palaces and strongholds turned into forums for free expression and debate. The Empire's symbols, once a ubiquitous presence on countless worlds, were torn down, replaced by the diverse flags of a galaxy reclaiming its identity. The final push to eradicate the Empire's influence came from within. Dissidents and defectors, spurred by the Resistance's success, turned against their former masters, further destabilizing the remnants of the imperial regime. These internal revolts were critical, undermining any attempt by the Empire to mount a cohesive counteroffensive. The resistance, ever strategic, supported these uprisings, providing aid and expertise to ensure the Empire's complete and utter defeat. Among the liberated worlds, stories of heroism and sacrifice became the seeds of new legends. 
tales of the Resistance's diverse warriors fighting side by side against a common enemy, fostered a sense of galactic kinship that transcended old prejudices and fears. The memory of Earth's stand against the siege, the daring raid on the Imperial Corps, and countless other battles became part of the collective consciousness, a reminder of what could be achieved when beings of all species stood together. The fall of the Galactic Empire was not just a military victory, it was a transformational moment for the galaxy. The tyrants had fallen, but in their place rose the challenge of building a new order, one that could embrace the vast diversity of the galaxy's inhabitants. The resistance, once a coalition formed in opposition to oppression, began the delicate task of transitioning into a governance structure that could uphold the ideals for which they had fought so fiercely. In this new era, Earth and its allies faced the monumental task of fostering unity without the common enemy that had once bound them together. The Provisional Council worked tirelessly to draft a new galactic charter, one that would protect the rights and sovereignty of all worlds while promoting peace and cooperation. The negotiations were long and often fraught with disagreements, but the shared experiences of struggle and victory provided a foundation of mutual trust and respect. The galaxy stood at the dawn of a new age, its future unwritten but filled with promise. The fall of the tyrants had cleared the way for a grand experiment in interstellar democracy and unity. The scars of the past would not soon fade, but the hope for a brighter future, a future forged in the fires of resistance, illuminated the path forward. Humanity, once isolated on the fringes of the galaxy, had become one of the architects of this new era. Proof that even the smallest voice could change the course of history. The galaxy, having endured the tumult of revolution and the fall of tyranny, now faced the monumental task of reconstruction and reconciliation. The Galactic Empire, with its centuries of dominion, had left deep scars on countless worlds, both physical and cultural. Yet, amidst the ruins of the old order, a new hope emerged fueled by the same spirit of unity and determination that had brought about the Empire's downfall. In this era of rebuilding, Earth assumed a pivotal role. The planet, once on the cusp of becoming another footnote in the Empire's long history of conquest, had become a symbol of resistance and hope. Humanity's leadership and ingenuity, demonstrated throughout the conflict, positioned it as a key player in shaping the future of the galaxy. The United Worlds, a federation formed from the ashes of the Empire, was established with the goal of fostering peace, cooperation, and mutual respect among the diverse civilizations of the galaxy. The inaugural meeting of the United Worlds, held on Earth, was a momentous occasion. Representatives from across the galaxy gathered, each bringing their own hopes and aspirations for this new federation. The Earth, with its rich history and vibrant cultures, served as the perfect backdrop for discussions on governance, justice, and interstellar cooperation. The formation of the United Worlds was not without challenges. Differences in culture, philosophy, and politics necessitated a level of diplomacy and understanding unprecedented in galactic history. Yet, the shared experiences of struggle and triumph, of standing shoulder to shoulder against a common foe, provided a solid foundation for these discussions. Central to the new Federation's charter was the principle of self-determination, a direct response to the oppressive homogeneity enforced by the Galactic Empire. Each member world was granted equal representation, ensuring that no single voice could dominate the collective will. The scars of the Empire's rule, while deep, also served as a stark reminder of the dangers of unchecked power and the value of diversity and autonomy. The reconstruction efforts extended beyond political structures to the very fabric of galactic society. Worlds ravaged by the Empire's exploitation and warfare received aid and support, not as charity, but as an investment in the future of the galaxy. Humanity, alongside its allies, spearheaded initiatives to rebuild infrastructure, restore ecosystems, and revive cultural heritage. These projects, while monumental in scope, were imbued with a sense of optimism, a belief in the resilience of life and the enduring strength of unity. As the galaxy healed, stories of the resistance, of humanity's defiant stand, the daring exploits of the Allied forces and the final victorious assault on the Imperial Corps 
became legends. These tales, passed down through generations, served as enduring reminders of what had been achieved and the sacrifices made. They inspired not just a sense of pride, but a commitment to the ideals of the United Worlds, to ensure that the darkness of tyranny would never again engulf the stars. The dawn of this new era was not just a celebration of victory over oppression, but a recognition of the responsibility that came with freedom. The United Worlds, with Earth at its heart, stood as a testament to the power of unity and the indomitable spirit of those who dare to dream of a better future. The galaxy, once divided and broken, now looked to the stars with hope, its peoples united in their diversity, ready to embark on a journey of exploration, discovery, and peace. The legacy of the resistance and the war against the galactic empire thus became a cornerstone of this new galactic civilization. From the ashes of conflict, a new society was born, one that valued freedom, cooperation, and the endless possibilities of unity. The galaxy had awoken to a new dawn, bright with the promise of a future written by those who had fought so valiantly for it. A future where every world, every species, could find their place among the stars.